the teams that I feel like are losers this year are the ones who sat on their hands and are already in a position where they're teetering. They're teetering the play in, like not even the playoffs in some of these instances. Mm -hmm. Um, And the, the biggest one to me, and we said this last year at the deadline, we talked about this every since we had this pod. We've talked about this. I don't exactly times, what team you're talking about. Right. <laughs> How many times are the Chicago Bulls going to sit here and just like look around, see people getting moved, and not want to jump in on the action? I don't there it, is bro. no direction for this organization right now, other than the fact that they are actually, I think, the number two team or the number one team, excuse me, in total average or average attendance per game still getting over 20,000 people a night to the United center for a team that is not going to make the playoffs. That's and crazy, even if man. by some miracle, they do first round. Exit. Guaranteed. Easily. Easily. And look, it's all unfortunate. What's, what's happening to Lonzo. We saw he was back in the gym uh, this week, putting up shots. So, Again, we, we all hope that he can come back and, and be healthy and be the player that he used to be. Um, but that started this kind of like downward spiral for the Bulls. As you put together him and, and DeMar and Zach Levine, and he felt like that missing piece. And once he was gone, it's all just kind of gone downhill. And they've been teetering. Again, they're not even – it's not like a team like, oh, they're scrapping and clawing the seven seed, the six seed. It's like they might not – Make the plan, bro. Like, you cannot sit here at this deadline with DeMar DeRozan on an expiring contract and say, nah, we're we're good. We believe that we currently constructed have what it takes to make a push. Just you're just lying news, to man. yourselves. You're lying to yourselves and you're lying to your fans. It's not good, bro. It's 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 terrible management. That's what it is. It's literally terrible management. Like you're just mm-hmm. not making the right moves in in the direction you're supposed to be going in. Because it's like you're staying pat. Like you said, you're acting like a team that is we're a couple pieces away. We're a couple like like the Knicks and the and the Cavs did like I'm not the Cavs, the Knicks and the, the Mavs did like yeah, we're a couple key role players here away. Like we're just we're, yeah, not close, bro. You are you're not close. You are nowhere near close. And with this current like roster that you have right now, there's no direction. There's no there's no reason you guys should be staying pat with this roster. It's just there's no path forward with the way you guys are going. So to you know, sit on your hands like you said and just not make any moves, not make any deals, not even try to you know build it or, or tear it down and rebuild like we've been saying for the longest time. Mm-hmm. It's just bad management. And it's like. Like I said, ever since I believe we started this podcast, we've said that they need to tear it down and rebuild and start again. And the fact that we're still here <laughs> a year later is like, it's just, like I said, it's just bad management. It, it honestly makes no sense. The first YouTube video I ever did was literally after the trade deadline last year, going over the biggest. I went through every single trade and then went through the biggest winners and losers. And I said, the Chicago Bulls are crazy for not doing anything. They are not in a position to be like, we're good with what we got. Y'all don't have it. Vucevic came out saying he likes what we have. We think we nothing. have. We, what do you say? He thinks we have what it takes. What it takes for what? <laughs> Literally, the nine <laughs> seed right now, bro. Right. Y'all are three and, a half, three and a half games above the, I just had a standings pull up. Three and a half games above the Nets who are the 11th seed out East. There is a for real chance like that this team does not make the playing tournament. And again, even if y'all do, you're running into the Celtics, the Cavs, the Bucks, or the Knicks, maybe the Sixers. Sweet. All five of those teams are sweeping this Chicago Bulls team easily like cakewalk. You're just not being honest with yourselves, bro. You're not being honest. Because like I said, if you do make the playoffs, then what? There's no, there's no way you could look at the team. You look at the way you've been playing. There's no way you could legitimately say, yo, we have a chance to make it to the Eastern Conference Finals, let alone come out of the East. If you're not right. doing that and you're not, you don't have like, you know, a, a, a good young core in a great direction, there's no reason you should be staying pat with your roster, bro. I think we talked about it all the time. Those teams that just constantly just not even mid, you're just like below average, but not super bad enough to where, you know, you can actually rebuild through the draft. It's a terrible way to, to to go about your roster and go about, you know, 
team construction. So, but again, am I surprised? No, because like I said, they've been doing this for like it feels like forever now. So I'm really not that surprised. What's crazy is, and I didn't even peep this until uh, Kenny pointed it out. He actually put up a video. It felt like as soon as the trade deadline ended, I think he had it recorded. Like he knew they weren't going <laughs> to do anything. Put out a whole video, basically like a 15 minute rant going off about how inactive this new front office has been at the deadline. And he pointed out that the one bright spot on this Bulls roster right now is Kobe White this season. Mm -hmm. That is someone that was drafted by Garpax, who had gotten fired for Artunis Karnishovas, who's the current GM. So really, the only bright spot is not even from this current front office. Y'all <laughs> have done nothing to improve this current roster. You're going to... Do you think DeMar, DeMar DeRozan is going to resign there? And even if he did, does it make a difference? I was just about to say, what's the, even if he does, like, what's the point, bro? <laughs> so, like, I, I, I genuinely, I, it, bro, if y'all got fans that are Chicago, if y'all have friends that are Chicago Bulls fans, bro, give them a hug, give them a call, check in on them, bro. I, I don't understand it. We haven't understood it for months now, years really, and they they just refuse to make. Any type of moves. Obviously, the Zach Levine, you know, foot surgery thing. It sounds like he may actually have had the deal on the table to get him to Detroit. He might have did the surgery thing to, you know, be like, ah, not trying to go there. Do you blame him? He, no, not a bit. Because when you <laughs> think about it, bro, Zach Levine went from Minnesota, which was a losing situation. Chicago got there, losing situation. Finally made the playoffs after like seven or eight years in the NBA, bounced in the first round, hasn't sniffed a playoff game since then, and then is in a position now where they're probably going to miss the playoffs again. I would not be trying to go to a team that just set the losing streak record this year. <laughs> so I don't blame him one bit. But if that's the case, DeMar is on an expiring, bro. You've got to make some shape. Every team in the NBA that is trying to contend for a championship would love to have Alex Caruso on their roster. I Fact. promise you, you could have gotten a fantastic deal for Alex Caruso. There's no way you don't pull the trigger on that right now. Because what is he? What are we doing with him here? Just wasting his wasting his talents, bro. He doesn't add. He's not like I said. He's a he. He can help a contending team. For you guys, it's like he's gonna help you get the nine seed. Like right. It, while he's while his value is super high, it just like I said, it's just poor management. You don't know when to move off of these guys when you should. You don't know when to like tear it down when you should. It's just. It's delusion. It's, that's really what it is. It's delusion. Yeah, I, I don't understand it. Mm -hmm.